Hello, dear viewers. This is Off the World welcoming you to our channel. You've landed on Nations of the World, a series that takes you on a whirlwind tour of the globe, one nation at a time, weaving a tale of history, culture, and a whole lot more. Today, we're setting our compass towards a country that is as diverse as it is vast, a land that cradles an ancient civilization and yet strides boldly into the future. Yes, we're talking about India. If you enjoy our journey, do give this video a like. Your thumbs up helps us bring more of such content to you. And we're all ears for your suggestions. So do drop a comment letting us know which country you'd love to explore next in our series. So buckle up, folks, as we embark on a journey through the mesmerizing history of India. India, a country located in the heart of South Asia, is known for its diverse culture and rich history. This vast land stretches from the icy peaks of the Himalayas in the north to the sun-kissed beaches of Kerala in the south. To the west, the Thar Desert stretches out like a golden sea, while to the east, the emerald green tea gardens of Assam roll out like a lush carpet. Among the bustling cities, Delhi, the capital, stands tall with its rich tapestry of centuries-old architecture and modern skyscrapers. Mumbai, the city of dreams, hums with vibrant life, while Kolkata, the cultural capital, enchants with its old-world charm and intellectual allure. Then, of course, there's Bangalore, the Silicon Valley of India, a city where the future is being written with code. India's landmarks are as diverse as its geography, the Taj Mahal, an ivory-white marble mausoleum on the bank of the Yamuna River in Agra is a testament to love that has stood the test of time. The Qutub Minar, a soaring tower in Delhi, whispers tales of the past, while the palaces of Jaipur, painted in hues of pink, narrate stories of royal grandeur. To the south, the intricate stone carvings of the temples in Hampi and Mahabalipuram showcase the artistic brilliance of the ancient times. The Sun Temple in Konark, an architectural marvel, is a tribute to the Sun God, while the Golden Temple in Amritsar, shimmering in the northern sun, is a beacon of hope and spiritual solace. The geography of India is not just about physical landscapes, it is a smorgasbord of cultures, languages and traditions, each region contributing to the rich tapestry that is India, from the snow-capped mountains of Kashmir to the vibrant beaches of Goa, from the sand dunes of Rajasthan to the backwaters of Kerala, every corner of India tells a unique story. With this geographical context in mind, let's delve into the fascinating history of India. The history of India begins with the birth of the Indus Valley Civilization. Now this wasn't your run-of-the-mill ancient civilization. Oh no, the Indus Valley Civilization, also known as Harappan Civilization, is one of the world's oldest urban civilizations, dating back to around 5,000 years ago. Imagine a time when the pyramids of Egypt were just a twinkle in an architect's eye, and the mighty Roman Empire was but a distant dream. That's when the folks of the Indus Valley were busy setting up shop. They built cities, designed drainage systems, developed a writing system and created a flourishing trade network. Quite the overachievers, wouldn't you say? Now, where was this civilization, you ask? Well, the Indus Valley civilization was located in what is now Pakistan and Northwest India. It was discovered quite by accident in the late 19th century when railway tracks were being laid down for the Lahore Multan line. Talk about stumbling upon history. The significance of the Indus Valley civilization lies not only in its age, but also its urban planning. The cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, the most famous of the lot, had a level of architectural planning that would make a modern city planner weak at the knees. And let's not forget their remarkable skill in crafting tiny seals and beads. Of course, every civilization has its mysteries. The Indus script, a form of writing found on many artifacts, remains undeciphered. Who knows what stories and history it holds? Uh, another mystery is the sudden decline of this civilization around 1900 BC. Scholars are still scratching their heads over that one. So there you have it, a brief glimpse into the dawn of civilization in India, a time of unprecedented urban development, intricate craftsmanship, and unanswered riddles. From the ancient city ruins, we move to the advent of the Vedic Age. But that, dear listeners, is a tale for the next scene. The Vedic Age marked a significant turn in India's history. Now imagine a time around 1500 BCE when the Indian subcontinent was a cradle of vibrant culture, society and spirituality. 
This period, known as the Vedic Age, is named after the Vedas, the oldest scriptures of Hinduism. The Vedic Age is divided into two main periods, the early Vedic or Rig Vedic period and the later Vedic period. The Rig Vedic period, named after the Rig Veda, the first of the four Vedas, saw the rise of the Indo-Aryans. They were primarily pastoral people with a tribal society structured around clans and tribes. As time moved on, the later Vedic period marked a shift from pastoral life to settled agriculture. Society became more complex with the emergence of distinct social classes. This was the birth of the Varna system, a social hierarchy that later evolved into the caste system. In terms of religion, the Vedic age was a time of profound spiritual exploration. The Rig Veda is filled with hymns dedicated to various deities reflecting a polytheistic belief system. However, the later Vedas began to explore concepts of a single universal spirit, an early form of monotheism. The Vedic Age also witnessed significant developments in science, particularly in the field of astronomy. Vedic scholars observed celestial bodies and their movements, leading to the creation of a lunar calendar. Culture and art flourished during this period. The Vedas themselves, written in the ancient Sanskrit language, are considered literary masterpieces. They contain hymns, mantras and rituals, but also philosophical discussions, laying the foundation for later philosophical schools of thought in India. The Vedic Age had a profound impact on Indian society, culture and religion. It shaped the social structure, introduced spiritual concepts that are still prevalent today, and fostered scientific and cultural advancements. The echoes of this period can still be heard in modern India, from the rituals performed in Hindu temples to the verses chanted during spiritual ceremonies. As the Vedic age faded, the Mauryan Empire rose to prominence. But that, dear listeners, is a tale for another time. So stay tuned for the next chapter of our journey through India's rich and captivating history. The Mauryan Empire, followed by the Gupta Empire, marked the golden age of classical Indian history. These two dynasties not only shaped the social, cultural and economic aspects of the Indian subcontinent, but also left an indelible mark on the world. The Mauryan Empire, established by Chandragupta Maurya in the 3rd century before Common Era, was one of the most extensive empires in the world, stretching from the Himalayas in the north to the Deccan Plateau in the south. The Mauryan administration under the stewardship of Chanakya was a marvel of ancient bureaucracy with its efficient tax system, a well-trained army and an elaborate system of spies. The reign of Ashoka, the third Mauryan emperor, is particularly noteworthy. He turned to Buddhism after witnessing the horrors of war and propagated the principles of non-violence, compassion and tolerance. Ashoka's edicts inscribed on pillars and rocks across the empire still stand as testaments to his enlightened rule. Next, we step into the era of the Gupta Empire, often referred to as the Golden Age of Ancient India. The Gupta period, starting from the 4th century Common Era, was a time of great prosperity and cultural development. This era saw significant advancements in science, technology, engineering, art, dialectic, literature, logic, mathematics, astronomy, religion and philosophy. The Gupta rulers like Chandragupta I, Samudragupta and Chandragupta II were great patrons of education and culture. The world's first university, Nalanda, flourished during this time, attracting scholars from far and wide. The Gupta period also witnessed the creation of classical Sanskrit literature, with the works of Kalidasa, Vishnu Sharma and Aryabhata. The Mauryan and Gupta empires, despite their eventual decline, left an enduring legacy. The principles of governance, the emphasis on education, the flourishing of arts and sciences and the promotion of tolerance and peace are all hallmarks of these great empires. After the fall of the Gupta Empire, India saw a period of invasions and the rise of regional powers, but the echoes of the Mauryan and Gupta eras can still be heard today, resonating in the heart of Indian culture and civilization. The medieval period in India was marked by the establishment of the Delhi Sultanate and the Mughal Empire two dominant powers that left indelible imprints on the Indian subcontinent's tapestry of history. The Delhi Sultanate, a Muslim kingdom based in Delhi, held sway from the late 12th to the early 16th centuries. It was a time of significant political change as the subcontinent saw the rise and fall of five different dynasties. 
The sultans of Delhi were known for their administrative acumen, establishing a system of governance that allowed for a degree of regional autonomy under central control. They also played a crucial role in the spread of Islam in the region, fostering a unique synthesis of cultures. Now let's turn the pages towards the Mughal Empire. Founded in the early 16th century by Babur, a Central Asian prince with a mixed lineage of Mongol and Turkish, the Mughal Empire was a period of unprecedented grandeur and refined tastes. This empire's influence was such that it is often considered the starting point of modern India. The Mughals were great patrons of the arts and architecture. Their reign gave birth to the distinctive Mughal architectural style, a fusion of Persian, Turkish and Indian elements. The iconic Taj Mahal, a monument of love built by Emperor Shah Jahan, stands as a testament to this. Beyond bricks and mortar, the Mughals left a rich cultural legacy that permeated every aspect of society. They introduced new forms of literature, music, dance and painting, encouraging a flowering of cultural expression that enriched the Indian cultural landscape. The Mughals also promoted a syncretic culture where people of different faiths could coexist harmoniously. This spirit of tolerance and harmony became a cornerstone of the Indian ethos. However, the sun eventually set on the Mughal Empire. By the mid-18th century, European traders had begun to make their presence felt on Indian shores, marking the end of the medieval period and the beginning of a new chapter in Indian history. The medieval period ended with the advent of European traders. Tracing back to the 15th century, India was a land of empires and kingdoms, with its wealth of spices and textiles making it a bustling hub of trade and culture. However, as the dawn of the 16th century approached, a significant shift was on the horizon. The allure of exotic treasures, the promise of untold riches, and the drive of ambitious European powers began to shape the future of the subcontinent. It was the Portuguese who first sailed to the Indian shores, drawn by the promise of wealth and the allure of the exotic. Swiftly following suit were the Dutch, French, and British. Their arrival marked a transition from the age of independent kingdoms and empires to an era of foreign domination, the colonial period. The European powers established trading posts along the coast with the British eventually asserting dominance, leading to the establishment of the British Raj in the mid-19th century. This shift did not occur without resistance, as the Indian Rebellion of 1857 would attest. A new era had begun, one of struggle and resilience, and India was poised to write a new chapter in its history. Post-independence, India embarked on a journey to establish itself as a democratic republic. The ink had barely dried on the documents of independence when India faced its first massive challenge, the partition. The subdivision of British India into two separate dominions, India and Pakistan, triggered one of the largest mass migrations in human history. Millions were displaced and communal violence erupted, leaving deep scars that persist to this day. Despite these tumultuous beginnings, India quickly found its footing. The drafting and implementation of the Constitution of India in 1950 marked a significant milestone, enshrining the principles of justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, the chief architect of the Constitution, played a pivotal role in ensuring these democratic values were firmly embedded in the nation's fabric. In the decades that followed, India faced numerous obstacles, including socio-political unrest, economic crises, and regional conflicts. Yet it was during these trying times that India showcased its resilience. Leaders like Jawaharlal Nehru, Indira Gandhi and Atal Bihari Vajpayee steered the nation through these challenges, shaping India's political and socio-economic landscape. The late 20th century saw India liberalizing its economy, opening its doors to foreign investment. This economic reform, initiated in 1991 under the leadership of then Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao and Finance Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh, catapulted India onto the global stage. Since then, India has made strides in various fields, from technology and space exploration to healthcare and education. The growth of the nation's tech industry in particular has been remarkable. Bangalore, often referred to as the Silicon Valley of India, is a testament to this progress. However, India's journey is far from over. The nation continues to grapple with issues such as poverty, corruption and social inequality, 
Yet with every challenge, India continues to evolve, driven by the indomitable spirit of its people and the unyielding belief in the strength of its democracy. Today, India stands as the world's largest democracy. India's current government is testament to its democratic values. With a constitution that came into effect in January of 1950, India is a federal parliamentary democratic republic. This means that the president of India is the head of state, while the prime minister is the head of government. The structure of India's government is a fascinating mix of both federal and unitary features. The power is distributed among the central government and the states, but in times of emergency, India can be governed as a unitary state. The Parliament of India is bicameral, composed of the Rajya Sabha or Council of States and the Lok Sabha or House of the People. The Rajya Sabha is a permanent body that has 238 members representing states and union territories and up to 12 members nominated by the President for their contributions to art, literature, science and social services. The Lok Sabha, on the other hand, is the House of the People, with members directly elected by citizens of India. Key figures in India's government include the President, the Vice President and the Prime Minister, along with the Council of Ministers. The President of India, the constitutional head of the executive in India, is elected by an electoral college and serves a term of five years. The Prime Minister, chosen by the members of the Lok Sabha, heads the Council of Ministers, who are responsible for running various departments and ministries. The government's policies are as diverse as the country itself, addressing areas like social reform, economic development and foreign relations. Some of the recent notable policies include the goods and services tax for comprehensive indirect tax on manufacture, sale and consumption of goods and services, and the Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana for financial inclusion. As we see, India's history is a rich tapestry of events, cultures and people. The current government, with its democratic structure and policies, reflects this tapestry, continually shaping and being shaped by the nation's vibrant history. India's history is a treasure trove of knowledge and understanding. From the dawn of civilization along the fertile banks of the Indus, through the spiritual enlightenment of the Vedic Age, to the grandeur of the Mauryan and Gupta empires, we journeyed through the medieval period, witnessing the rise and fall of dynasties, before stepping into the colonial era that reshaped the Indian subcontinent. The struggle for independence, the post-independence era, and the current government's strides towards progress all paint a vibrant tapestry of a nation that continues to evolve. India's history is filled with famous figures and events, rich cultures and monumental landmarks. It's a testament to the resilience and versatility of its people. If this piqued your interest, do consider subscribing for more insightful journeys into the histories of nations around the globe. This is Off The World, signing off. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed.